Hey, folks. I guess we might as well go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see. What's going on here? Uh, we are... We've, we've pushed out a new viewer update. This had a couple of fixes related to Terranino. Um, I think there was one thing we decided to revert, and then there was at least one additional fix that we put in. Um, which was to get the new release notes to show up correctly, uh, to be linked to correctly from the viewer. Um, so as usual, that means that people are merging various other things into, uh, you know, merging various other things with the, the new release viewer. Um, so that'll be plugging along for a bit. Um, we have Bakes on Mesh, I think that the last I heard, the updated appearance service had passed IQA, but uh, there was one new uh, bug that just got flagged today, so I don't know the status on that. Um, don't know if it's a viewer thing or an appearance service thing. Uh, anyway, still trying to get that stuff sorted. Uh, the last simulator side changes for appearance service are in... Uh, Dirt Sim 413, which should be going out around four days now. You know, you're not hearing me? How about everybody else? I can hear you. Okay, huh. I don't know what's going on with Polly Sale. I guess uh, she's picking me up somehow then. Huh, okay. Uh, let's see. So, Big Sun Mesh, uh, still hopefully soon, but uh, don't know exactly what's going on with that. Uh, EEP, I know they are still plugging away on graphics issues. I don't know if we have Ryder this week. Let's see. Uh, I'm not seeing Ryder, and I'm not seeing Alexa, so... Uh, if either of them swing by, I will get their updates. But, uh, yeah, as, as far as I know, EEP is still just uh, basically Graham cranking away on um, rendering issues, which uh, unfortunately is seems to be a full-time job because every time you fix one thing, you break something else, or sometimes you break two other things. Uh, let's see, other stuff, uh, I'll do, do an animation update in a minute, uh, Lucy, you had asked about the status of the, um, uh, get object details change, which had gotten clobbered when we did the, uh, simulator rollback, um, we, we do have a target, uh, simulator release that we're going to try to get that transplanted into, which is going to be Dirt Sim 415. So uh, I will get that in next couple days, and uh, then it'll be, you know, subject to the usual schedule stuff. Don't know exactly. Get that rolled and working at some point. Um, and... What else? Uh, Animesh update. Uh, I've been working on visual params support for uh, for Animesh. I've got the basic stuff working now where you can request setting a particular parameter value or set of parameter values and then the messages get sent out to everybody and the parameters get updated and so that's all cool. Um, the, the first big obstacle I've run into with that is uh, vertical positioning. There's, there's all kind of special purpose code in the appearance service and the simulator for basically trying to keep your feet on the ground when something changes about your shape. And uh, we don't have core, we don't have the information on the back end to do the same thing um, with animeshes. So, 
uh, we'd have to either add that or we would have to uh, basically emulate the same effect in the viewer. So I'm, I'm looking at how we're handling uh, vertical positioning stuff now and trying to figure out how to emulate it. Uh, in the process of that, I'm getting kind of confused about how our vertical positioning stuff works in the first place. It, it looks like the way we handle the um, the hover the hover option in the shape uh, in the shape wearable is is kind of weird. It's, it's supposed to max out at two meters, but if you actually set it to the max, you wind up being lifted up by more than two meters. And I don't know what's going on with that. I think we're maybe like double counting and. The back end raises. Something screwy. Uh, let's see. So, uh, anyway, still plugging along on that. Um, hoping to get a project viewer out once stuff is in a little more stable state, but it's, you know, it's probably going to be a couple more weeks at least before we're in a decent shape on that. Um, and what else? Uh, there was one question about a, a bug that had been filed that uh, uh, I was curious if, if you guys had any thoughts about. There's there's a new change to do with uh, stopping uh, object rotation interpolation on region crossing, and I don't know if anybody's actually dealt with this stuff or not. Um, and there's this request to uh, try to change the behavior a little bit more. And I don't have enough experience with this to really have any opinion about it. I just thought I'd toss it out here in case anybody else has uh, has feelings about it. is uh, kind of referring to a, a behavior change that's in Terranino, but I don't have the link for the other issue that it's referring to, so I'm not sure exactly what the original change is. Beck, what do you mean improving only one kind of crossing? Everybody who drives for drivers of Second Life pretty much uses that.
So this is all to compensate for kind of unpredictable behavior at region crossings caused by the delay, variable delay caused by all the stuff that has to get bundled up and sent across when we move to a different simulator. Okay. The purpose of all this is to deal with the fact that what really happens when you cross a, a simulation boundary is that you stop dead for about a second or so. And the viewer tries to hide that from the user a little bit. Doesn't do so very successfully because the last velocity update that comes from the simulator when you cross regions while in contact with the ground like a vehicle is usually a junky value that can send you flying off wildly into space. Hmm, that really sounds like something we should be addressing on the back end, doesn't it? Right, I mean, ideally it would be addressed on the back end, but as a user I could only address it in the viewer, so um, that, that was what I did. Uh, right. If you want to talk about this offline, it's something that, you know, you need to go into the math to really figure out what's going on. Um, and I can only see the viewer side, but definitely what kills you in a lot of region crossings, but it did not kills you, just causes you to jerk around, is that the last value to come across the, you know, in the improved tourist object update of velocity and acceleration before the, uh, just, just as, as the, the losing sim is, is saying its last update is terrible. It can send you flying across the entire sim. Hmm, okay. Okay, well, this may be a little too esoteric for uh, general interest in this group, but, uh, you know, I'm happy to continue the discussion with anybody who's interested, or maybe uh, maybe this would be worth taking to the forums if uh, a lot of people are interested in the topic. Um, they talk to death on the forums. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, this isn't something I've worked with at all in the past, it's just, it just came up when we were uh, talking about feature requests and said I'd pass it along, so. I think it could be smartened up, but you'd have to do something like have a low-pass filter that was looking at the last few um, up updates, and if you were going along in a straight line, it's okay to project. If the last update you get is totally different from what you were previously doing, you're probably better off doing a stop. But that would require a lot, a lot, a lot of testing and more math and filter tuning and trying to figure out what's going on sim side and stuff like that, which was right. more than I could attempt at the time. But that would be the right answer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like people with different types of uh, Vehicles and uh, different degrees of lag may actually want different behavior, which adds an extra level of complexity, too. All right. Well, I think that's it for announcements for this week. Uh, anybody have uh, other questions or things they want to chat about? Penny, yeah, we, we talked a little bit about the anime shape support. Right now I'm working on basically being able to deal with that at the level of individual visual parameters or, or you know, a particular subset of them. Um, once that's all behaving well, then I'll look at uh, trying
trying to handle, you know, shapes all together. Uh, currently, the issue I'm looking at is for getting the vertical positioning right. Um, you, you have to do some some math every time uh, the avatar shape changes in order to keep the feet on the ground, and uh, the the code that we use for the avatar doesn't doesn't really work for animeshes, so we need some uh, equivalent stuff there. Uh, question about making animesh smaller or larger. Uh, yeah, basically the, the idea would be to allow animeshes to be customized the same way that avatars can be. You know, like if you go into, uh, if you go into your, like edit my shape, you know, you can change your, your height and your width and your arm. So the, the idea would be, you know, not, not to add the interactive editing, but to add the ability we set those values scripts um, and uh, uh, potentially to set them using uh, shape wearable so that that's what I'm currently uh, doing some kind of early testing on Uh, having something grow over time, uh, yeah, you probably could, you know, within the range of what we support, um, you know, like the, the kind of, the, the range of sizes you can set for an avatar by editing your shape wouldn't take you, all, like, all the way from child to adult or something like that, but uh, it does allow you to, you know, to do some level of, of customizing, and so, you know, you could, you could vary anything. So uh, yeah, um, the the exact details on what we're going to wind up implementing and releasing is still being worked out. But we that is the goal is to have uh, you know some provisions for for customizing animations. And slick mesh body stacked in a single attachment void. <laughs> Don't expect it to collapse into some kind of black hole. Okay, well, it's encouraging that the TPs are working. I know there's been a lot of work on that.
Uh, is everyone working on various things? Um, okay, so we've got Animesh, Eep, we've got Bakes on Mesh. Uh, there's, uh, you know, the, the main releases are always getting worked on. Those have bug fixes and uh, occasionally kind of small feature changes. We have two viewers in progress that are pulling in open source contributions. Um, one of them for profiles behavior and one of them for um, uh, what is the other one? Oh, some a bunch of fixes related to the mesh uploader. Uh, we've got I think at least three or four viewers that are currently on hold because we don't have anybody working on them right now. Um, and there's probably a longer list. I can take a look just a second. Arctan is an example of something that we're not uh, working on right now just for lack of resources rather than lack of interest. What else do we have? We're trying to get the view reported over to Visual Studio 2017. Uh, Stacker's been putting in a bunch of work on that. There's a, there's a view release that has some rendering fixes. Don't know exactly what's in that one. Um, One that has some fixes for texture loading and caching that uh, is looking for a home right now. Um, yeah, it's it's a pretty long list actually of active where we wish they were active viewers, and there's always more stuff uh, coming along. Um, you know, at, at this meeting I tend to talk most about the things that have to do specifically with content creation, but uh, there's there's quite a bit of other stuff going on. Yeah, we're trying to get the cache thing revived now. Attachment point support for Animesh? I don't remember hearing about that one before. Sounds interesting. Now, for anybody just joining us, it's a topic that's come up quite a few times before. <laughs> and uh, still hoping to look into it after we get some of the uh, shape support stuff working. Size guide pick. talked about the size guide thing before. Uh, it's still in the bucket of stuff we have to work on at some point, but it isn't uh, currently living in, in an in-progress viewer, so it would be, you know, farther out.
Yeah, personally, I'd find it really handy to have something like the size guide when I'm trying to debug things like vertical positioning. If it could actually show you, you know, how far your feet are off the ground or whatever. Pivot points with mesh uploads. Yeah, that one, uh, there's been some work on the viewer side, but it's been on hold for a while because we haven't had anybody to make the corresponding simulator changes. Um, you know, to, to get the pivot points to work, you actually have to change some stuff on the back end so that your your logic for generating the physics shapes or positioning them or whatever is, is different. Um, so that is uh, still somewhat alive, but it hasn't uh, hasn't progressed for a bit. Um, so I don't know. Maybe once we get the uh, simulator stuff in a, a little more stable state, uh, we'll have more time to look into things like that. Uh, I'm not sure even by the photo emulated effect. Yeah, Penny, the, the business of changing animation priorities on the fly has, has come up quite a bit. Uh, I, you know, I doubt that there's any really great reason for it. I think that's probably just the way that we initially implemented animations. And so, you know, the priority was just a baked in characteristic. Um, so it's, it's the kind of thing that would be, uh, you know, a little tricky to change on the fly because you'd need some new characteristic that got, you know, created and, and uh, sent out to everybody. Um, but I, I do see how it would be useful. And We need to be able to change the priority of internal animations. Um, maybe. Is the problem that the internal animations have their own priority, or is the problem that uh, sometimes you need to change 
the priorities of, of other things that you're trying to use. Yeah, it would be nice if we could do something like extending the, uh, you know, the various play animation commands to include a priority. Uh, Lucy, you mentioned uh, you mentioned other overrides. Are there particular ones that you think would come up a lot? Yeah, being able to synchronize is a big one. I'm pretty sure we have an existing Jira for L preload animation, uh, probably some of the others too. Yeah, you can have a constraint where you target a, I think you target a joint to a collision volume, which is a, a special type of joint that everybody has several of. Um, 
But yeah, as far as I know, it's undocumented and uh, largely neglected at this point. I think if you do something like the cross leg sit, uh, there's a constraint that, that like rests your hand on your legs or something like that. So it, it is used a few places. Where is that documented? Well, that's the problem. As far as I know, it isn't documented anywhere. I just discovered it by reading the code. Yeah, I think the the number one thing for allowing close interactions would just be the synchronization. If you can have you know two apps playing the same thing at the same time, but um, yeah, if you want something more sophisticated, then you need to deal with IK and all that.
proposal. You do bakes on mesh by wearing something. You can wear an animesh and clothe it, then bake. Yeah, the, so the problem there is that, um, you know, the, the, I mean, the way bakes on mesh is set up right now, it's, it's referencing, it's basically saying, you know, use the bake texture of, uh, of your, of the corresponding agent, right? Um, so if you wanted to be able to sort of hand it off to an animesh object that isn't associated with an agent, then you, there's got to be some way to define, uh, you know, who's who's bake it's supposed to be using, and and even then, you know, the the bake for a given agent isn't persistent, right? It's always getting expired and replaced by something. Change your appearance. What I've done is to take um, an animesh mesh and go through the whole baking process and put some clothing on it while, while wearing it. And then I can look at the bake texture in the, uh, edit, in, in the texture edit with window. I can't do much with it. But what I can do is take a screenshot of that and get myself uh, a 128 by 128 uh, te texture. And then I go paste that uh, under my animesh, and because I have an animesh uh, which has standard clothing layouts, it actually all works and everything lines up. Oh, yeah, so okay, sure. Basically, what I'd like is some legitimate way to accomplish that, that operation. Yeah, huh, that's an interesting question. Um... Yeah, normally the idea with bakes is that it's a kind of a sort of a transient thing that just gets generated, uh, you know, kind of on the fly each time your outfit changes. But, uh, yeah, if there's some way to, um, you know, kind of extract it as a permanent texture, then you could, you could use it for other things. I would imagine there would be um, permissions concerns about that. To have copy mod and on on all of the uh, inputs to the bake, you ought to be able to copy the output. Yeah, if you have the transfer on all the ones. You uh -huh. Transfer on the output. I'd like to do you know the eyedropper icon in in uh, texture selection. I'd uh -huh. like to be able to apply that to a bake and uh, get it out as a, a hard texture with its own UUID. you might want to charge me 10 limits for this. <laughs> well, of course. Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. It's almost like uh, sort of uh, sort of unbaking or something. Um, but uh, I can see there would be some uh, potential applications. Uh, I mean, the other times we've talked about bakes on mesh, it was or bakes on animesh, it was more trying to make the animeshes act like avatars so that they could actually have their own, uh, you know, outfit information and, and generate their own big textures. Um, but of course, that would certainly be a more elaborate process than just sort of eyedroppering it. That, that's what I'm thinking. What, 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 what's the minimum viable product here? Uh huh. And I, I've actually been doing a fair amount of making up animesh with um, what, with various clothing textures I've been able to get hold of. And I have one of them running around uh, the beta grid in animesh one. Uh, and that one has the polka dot dress from the um, default avatar uh, uh, cut and pasted onto an, an animation. It actually looks okay. A little low res, but it works. You're just not getting the original uh, bake resolution. This is why it's so low res, right? I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm cheating by cutting and pasting from the deliberately limited texture image <laughs> sure. that you're allowed to look at. It's a proof of concept that you don't want to actually do that. But if we had a legit way to do that, we would basically be able to recycle system clothing on the animesh. And in parallel with this, I've been able to get a 
meta mesh character down to 30 uh, land impact, and the and it's one that wears system clothing and it's full bento. So um, basically, you, you can do a fair, a, something that looks like a classic avatar in Animesh for 30 LI and put system clothing on it, um, if you can get hold of all the parts. Huh, yeah, that's kind of neat. So, but, but, but it means going out into Photoshop, you know, the, the, the situation we're all used to having, you know, Photoshop, Blender, and Second Life all open simultaneously. Um, that's just too much for the average user. We, we, this has got to be made a little more user friendly. Yeah, well, that's that's something that we've we've talked about a lot is just the the barriers to entry for content creation. Um, you know, the old the old prim world was uh, you know kind of rudimentary in some ways, but it was also more approachable. It was easy. I'm arguing for simplifying the process of changing clothes for clothes for Animesh rather than uh, full content creation. Right. Otherwise, what will happen is, is we're going to have a clone army of identical Animesh. Um, I think someone's selling that there's a character in Marketplace called Dina, and it has its own selection of clothing because the clothing is all baked uh, with the skin texture. So you can change clothing, but but you need a separate set of clothing for each um, e e each animesh skin. That does the scale. Yeah. Yeah, you know, in a way, what you're talking about with being able to uh, extract the the baked textures to to use them with animesh is, is a little analogous to the investigation we're using doing on shape customization now with uh, you know basically being able to use uh, uh, you know shape related content that, that's originally ours. Uh, Yes, if we had in-world shape customization and in-world clothing changes, Animesh would basically be uh, general enough for the typical user to use. I wonder how that would work. Have like a kind of a uh, you know clone my appearance option or something. I mean, as you say, you'd have to do some appropriate uh, you know uh, permissions checking before you could do that. Yeah, okay. Well, that's a that's a good idea. I got to think about that one.
Well, it's true that the existing bakes don't require any permission other than just being able to see your content, which you can basically do with anything you own, whether it's copy or modify or not. Um, so, you know, you could probably argue that either way. Okay, well, I guess we're about at time here. Um, a good discussion today. Thanks for all the uh, suggestions. So we'll keep you guys posted on the uh, continuing progress of the Animesh customization, and guess uh, guess we'll see everybody. Will we see everybody next week? I think we will. Yeah, it's still that's still May. Um, should be uh, should be no problem. Yeah, yeah. Lucy, I'll keep you up to date on the get object details. Um, I should be able to get the code transplanted pretty quickly. Just a question of how long it takes to go through the release process again. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks, Fear. Thanks, everyone. All right. Yep. Yeah, thanks for coming.